Hello, I am Muhammad Jaber, PhD candidate at Institute of Energy and Climate Research, ICAFONF, and BGSP student as well. Today, I'm going to show you some progress about my work, which titled by Laser-Based Realization of Integrated Back Contact Silicon Solar Cell with Passivated Contact. As known, the solar energy is a main source of energy in the Earth. And the most common way to convert it, this amount of energy to usable form, it's a solar cell. Solar cell which can convert it sunlight to electricity directly based on photovoltaic effect. As you can see in the figure one, which represents the conventional structure of solar cell which are available in the market. Actually, it's composed from single junction with 1.1 electron volt band gap. The typical efficiency which can deliver from this kind of solar cell more or less 20 percent and from here we got a question which what are the limitation of the solar cell efficiency actually to make us able to answer this question we have to make a quick review for physics of solar cell single junction solar cell suffering from many kind of losses shukli and Kuzaya shows some study which can show the relation between efficiency with different material which has different band gap energy. As you can see in the figure two in white region, which represent the maximum efficiency you can deliver from material at certain band gap. For, uh, for example, for our material, crystalline silicon solar cell, which has energy band gap 1.2 electron volt, we can achieve a theoretical efficiency up to 30. But our question is still open because we mentioned before to 20 percent uh, of efficiency, but we are talking about theoretical limit around 30. From here, the concept of high efficiency solar cell come to stage, which represent the competition between solar cell to achieve highest efficiency possible, which is close to theoretical limits. To achieve that, we have to think about losses mechanism occurs in occur in the solar cell. We can categorize the losses to three main types. First one, it's quantum losses, which is nature because there is a difference between photons and band gap energy. The second one, it's optical losses. It's mainly due to the reflected light away from the sample. It's because uh, the metal in top side or due to the difference between reflective index between air and silicon. The third one, it's electrical losses, which mainly represent by recombination losses of excited carriers. And to minimize all this kind of losses, we supposed to use silicon solar cell, which is, shows a good a theoretical limit or highest theoretical limit comparing with other materials. And to minimizing the optical losses, we are supposed to use integrated back contact, IBC structure, to minimize the optical losses by converting all contact from top side to back side. And to overcome the recombination losses, we will supposed to use passivated contact concept. And actually, we're looking for to realize all this technique by using laser. And we will end up with our topics, laser-based realization of integrated back contact, silicon solar cell with passivated contact. As you can see in this structure, which represent the complicated structure of the cell we aim to, this is final goal for the project. Actually, this structure uh, provide many feature to minimize the losses. Let us start it with optical losses. This structure have surface texturing, which provide larger area than a flat one. That means there is more light will absorb. And the same structure property provide another feature, which is changing the reflected angle to be inside the wafer. That means more light will absorb. The second feature is anti-reflecting coating. Anti-reflecting coating, it's a chemical uh, composed which has a different reflective index, can change the reflective index between air and wafer gradually. The second one, and its most important one, it's IBC structure. Mainly, it's convert and remove all contact from top side and put it in back side. 
In this case, you will lift top side to receive all light. At the end, you can improve short circuit current density. In another hand, we have another feature to face and to fighting with recombination losses. For example, we will use surface passivation layer as a silicon oxide layer, which can cover and would passivate the dialinging bond and defects in material. The second one, it's field effect by using polysilicon or heavily doped polysilicon, which can act a field effect property, which can lead to selective contact structure. The third one, as you can see in the picture, there is no direct contact between silicon and metal, which is represent a main reason for recombination. After that, we can improve VOC. At the end of the day, we can improve efficiency. Actually, our work is focusing on how we can fabricate back structure with the sequence of B in contact. And to do that, we have to follow the following sequence. We will start it with N-type high equality silicon solar cell. After that, we will emerge this wafer with ozone water to get a silicon oxide layer or a very thin silicon oxide layer. After that, we will send sample to BECVD chamber, which used plasma or as a source energy instead of temperature to create thin film above of silicon. After that, we will send our sample to characterization method. Actually, we have first characterization method we used. It's ellipsometry spectroscopy. Actually, it depends on the laser to analyze state of polarization of the laser after reflected away from sample. And after that, we will get two parameter, psi and delta, which represent, which represent the how light will polarize after reflected. By nice fitting for this two parameter, we can get an idea how the thickness we got after deposition. As you can see, we have a thickness for amorphous around 200, 200 nanometer and 1.5 nanometer for silicon oxide. The second characterization method is Raman spectroscopy. And actually, it's non-destructive method, which can give us the idea about microstructure parameter of, of, of layer. Actually, this is Raman spectroscopy is based on the Raman scattering, which can give us the spectrum for each material. It looks like a fingerprint for, fingerprint for each material. As you can see in this spectrum, which represents the spectrum for amorphous silicon, hydrogenated amorphous silicon, because the peak is centered around 480. Please don't care about the sharp peak here, because this is artifact from system. After that, we will go to many process in our project. It's laser local crystallization. It's laser annealing. In this stage, we will use laser annealing instead of oven annealing, which use laser as an energy source instead of temperature. And by that, we can use a laser, as you can see here, to crystallize a specific region in back side. This is comparing with oven annealing, it, which is convert all the layer to polysilicon. We aim in this step to convert amorphous silicon to polysilicon. After that, to check if we, if we already converted amorphous silicon to polysilicon, we will use Raman spectroscopy again. As you can see here, the curve before and after annealing, there is a lot of the crystals show up after that, we will send this layer to chemical selective etching. Because we don't need amorphous anymore, we just care about polysilicon. So we will emerge this cell with a chemical composed, which can selective amorphous and left polysilicon. And by repeated last three steps, we can get a final structure. We will apply BECVD chamber again to growth amorphous, but in this time it's P type. And after that, we will use laser to crystallize the area and backside, and again apply thick etching to remove amorphous the rest. At final stage, we will get the final structure we aim to. As you can see here, the B and N type, the B and N contact in the backside. 
Actually, in this structure, we minimize the losses mechanism as possible. For example, like optical and electrical losses. And by using laser, actually we are using low temperature process, which is preferable for industry scale. And in same time, by using laser crystallization, we can specifically crystallize the region we want in backside. That allow to us to fine tuning to create an area for P and N contact. Thank you for listening. For further information or details or collaboration, please don't be hesitate to contact me in the following contact.